Greetings from the voice of Alan Kardec. And welcome from the voice of the spirits. We are here again today to take you on another small audio journey through the Spirits book by Alan Kardec. We will continue with the law of preservation, finishing up the means of self-preservation, questions 707 to 710. Then cover the enjoyment of material things, questions 711 to 714. Enjoy. Enjoy. Question 707. The means of subsistence are frequently lacking for certain individuals, even in the midst of the abundance around them. To what is this fact due? It is primarily due to the selfishness of humans, who do not always do what they should. Next, and most often, it is due to humans themselves. Seek and you shall find. These words do not mean that it is enough to simply look to the earth in order to find what you desire. Instead, you must seek with ardor and perseverance, without indifference and without allowing yourselves to be discouraged by obstacles that are quite often no more than means of putting your tenacity, patience, and firmness to the test. Refer to question 534. Author's remarks for question 707. If civilization multiplies our needs, it also multiplies the sources of labor and the means for living. But one must agree that in this sense there is still much to be done. When civilization has accomplished its task, no one will be able to say that they lack what is needed, except through their own fault. For many, misfortune happens when they choose a path nature has not traced out for them, and that is when they lack the intelligence required to succeed. There is a place in the sun for all, but on the condition that all take their place and not that of others. Nature cannot be responsible for the vices of social organization and for the consequences of ambition and vanity. We would have to be blind, however, if we did not recognize the progress that the most advanced cultures have made in this sense. Thanks to the laudable efforts that philanthropy and science together have unceasingly put forth for the improvement of humankind's material conditions, and notwithstanding the constant increase in population, insufficiency of production has been attenuated, at least for the most part and the most calamitous years have no comparison to those in former times. Public hygiene, that element so essential to energy and health, but unknown to our ancestors, is the object of an enlightened mindfulness. The unfortunate and suffering find places of refuge, and science has been put into action everywhere, contributing to the growth of everyone's well-being. Might it be said that we have finally attained perfection? Oh, certainly not. But what has been accomplished so far has given us an idea of what can be done with perseverance if men and women are sensible enough to seek contentment in real and serious things, rather than in the utopias that cause them to go backwards instead of advancing. Question 708. Aren't there situations in which the means of subsistence do not depend solely on human will, and where the lack of the barest necessities is a consequence of circumstances? These situations are frequently cruel trials which humans must undergo and to which they know they will be exposed. Their merit is in their submission to God's will if their intelligence does not furnish them with some means for escaping their difficulty. If death must touch them, they should submit to it without complaint, remembering that their hour of true freedom has arrived, and that despair at the final moment may cause them to lose the fruit of their resignation. Question 709. Have those who in critical situations were obligated to sacrifice their fellow beings to appease their hunger committed a crime? If it was a crime, was it lessened by the need to stay alive, which the preservation instinct has given them? 
I have already responded in saying that there is more merit in undergoing all the trials of life with selflessness and courage. In this case, there is a homicide and crime against nature, and it must be doubly punished. Question 710. On worlds where their physical makeup is pure, do the living beings have need for nourishment? Yes, but their food is in keeping with their nature. Such food would not be substantial enough for your dense digestive systems. Likewise, they would not be able to digest yours. Question 711. Is the use of the fruits of the earth a right of all humans? That right is a consequence of the need to stay alive. God would not impose a duty without granting the means to fulfill it. Question 712. Towards what end has God made the enjoyment of material things attractive? To drive humans to fulfill their missions and also to test them with temptation. Subquestion 712. What is the purpose of such temptation? To develop their reason so that they may learn to keep themselves from excesses. Author's remark for question 712. If humans had only been driven to utilize the fruits of the earth because of their usefulness, their indifference could have compromised the harmony of the universe. God has given them the attraction of pleasure, and this, in turn, incites them to accomplish the designs of providence. However, through this same attraction, God also wills to test them with temptation, and this incites them to abuse. Nonetheless, their reason should free them from it. Question 713. Do enjoyments have bounds traced out by nature? Yes, to show you the limit of what is necessary. But through your excesses, you bring on satiety, and thus you punish yourselves. Question 714. What should be thought of those who seek to satisfy their taste through all kinds of excesses? They are unfortunate creatures whom we should pity and not envy because they are very close to death. Subquestion 714. Is it physical or moral death that they are close to? Both. Author's remarks for question 714. Those who seek to satisfy their taste through excesses of all kinds place themselves below the animals because animals at least know how to limit themselves to satisfying their needs. Such persons negate the reason that God has given them for their guidance. And the greater their excesses, the greater is the dominion they give their animal nature over the spiritual. The illnesses, ailments, and death that result from abuse are also punishments for transgressing God's law.